black thing go from left to right, and I thought, I'm going to die out here. No one's ever going to know. I couldn't believe what my eyeballs were showing me. I'll never forget how evil the eyes were. It was horrible. I mean, I've never seen nothing that evil. It ran towards me at a, at a rate that I, I, I can't even explain. Turned and stared at me. And this look of, I just want to kill you. I want to say it was human, but it wasn't. He was, he, was, he was yelling at me to grab a gun, grab a gun. I was like, for what? He said, just grab a gun. And there's footprints all the way to the door of my house. It had went inside my garage all the way to the door. 911, what are you reporting? Jesus Christ, you better... Sir? Sure. Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. You're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Check us out online at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you've had an encounter, email me. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you tonight. Going to be talking to uh, Jeremy who comes to us from Poland, Maine. And uh, Jeremy had a very terrifying encounter where him and a buddy of his were actually run out of the woods. Uh, but there was a couple other things that led up to that. So he'll be going into that tonight. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you get a chance, check out sasquatchchronicles.com. Uh, get additional shows. You can become a member a lot of cool stuff on the site. If you get a chance, I hope you check it out. Sasquatchchronicles.com. How's everyone doing tonight? Thank you again for listening. Uh, let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome Jeremy to the show. Jeremy, thanks for coming on. Well, thanks for having me. I, uh, you have an awesome show. Yeah, no, I appreciate you coming on. Um, and I know you had an encounter in Maine, but there's a lot of other things that kind of built up to... Uh, your encounter if you would would you kind of start from the beginning and and then we'll eventually walk into uh, you guys being chased out of the woods sure my dad bought a house in uh, poland maine and um, we had just moved in in the fall uh, we had been there a couple of months i want to say early winter but there was there was snow on the ground the previous owners had had a pool above ground pool that they had left and they probably hadn't used it in a couple of years, but it was full of water. And, of course, it was frozen. We got up. Um, I shared a room with my brother. Uh, we heard a loud, loud bang uh, coming from outside and kind of a grunt. And I was only six at the time. We didn't dare look out the window. I, we ran and <laughs> called for my dad. He was sleeping. He, he didn't get up, so we... we um, got dressed later in the day and uh, we went outside and I went to the, the pool and there were footprints uh, in the snow and they were huge. And I had no idea what Bigfoot was. I didn't, you know, I mean, never crossed my mind. I'm only, you know, a young kid, but I remember asking my father, you know, what, why are there footprints in the snow? And he said, ah, somebody probably got drunk and, you know, came down and I pointed, there was a huge dent side of this pool maybe you know two inches deep it was just crushed right in caved right in i looked at it and i looked at him and said hey, just somebody who was drunk and that was the end of that and so and there were bare like bare human footprints yeah i mean that's the only way i could describe it they were they were feet you know but they were big they were huge and again i had no idea what bigfoot was or you know, I'm just a kid, and I just looked at my dad like, really? Why would somebody be doing that? But it, it didn't register. Nothing, you know, I'm, I'm a young kid. It was just, I thought it was really weird. To set the scene a little bit, in the, in the the growing up as a kid, there's blueberry, strawberry, raspberry uh, bushes all over the place. Um, and I would spend, especially summer vacations, you know, I would I'd be outside from the morning till... It started to get dusk, and I'd I'd go out sometimes alone, sometimes with my buddies. We'd build forts in the the woods and do all kinds of things. And uh, 
there would be times that I would hear, looking back on it, you know, I'd hear grunts. There, w- there would be structures built in the woods. And when, if I wasn't with my friend, I, I'd go up to him and I'd ask him, hey, did you come over here and did you build this? And 90% of the time, he's like, no, nah, I wasn't even, I didn't go out today. I didn't do anything today. It, there was also, see, I never experienced any smell. And I, I hear a lot about smells. Uh, what I did experience was a musky dog, like a really, really wet dog smell. And, I, and that never dawned on me because my buddy had, had they raised uh, Irish setters, not Irish setters. And they were Springer, Springer Spaniels, Springer Spaniels. And I, I'd go to certain places and I, they'd be a really, you know, uh, strong, wet dog smell. So I just thought it was his dogs. And there were several times I asked him and he said, no, I didn't bring my dogs out and I didn't go out today. So stuff like that would happen. Uh, a lot, um, you know, because I, I spent all my time in the woods. Um, so one summer, I was probably, I want to say 15, me and my buddy decided to go camping. And we had, uh, we took our tent out. I took I took my dog, and she was part Siberian Husky, and she's a really, really, really loyal dog. Um, I didn't need a leash for her. She stayed right beside me at all times. Um, we went out, we set up the tent, we made a campfire. We didn't start it or anything, but we put the rocks down. As soon as we got done that, my my dog's tail went underneath her. And she just kind of stood there. As soon as she did that, a tree probably 100 yards away came down the top of it. We could see it. And there was a roar. And... I don't know how to explain it. Um, My buddy looked at me. I looked at him. I looked at my dog. My dog took off and ran. And (laughs) the funny thing about it is as she's running, she was actually looking at me like, are you coming with me, dummy? (laughs) Yeah. And she took off. And they, like I I said earlier, they they found her uh, two towns over. It was about a week and a half, two weeks later. As that happened, me and my buddy took off. And we ran. We didn't run the same direction the dog ran in, but we left the camping. You know, my dad had bought me an L.O. Bean tent. I had all the, you know, cooking stuff. We left everything there. I came back the next day with my buddy to get it. And, you know, we didn't see anything. We didn't hear anything at that time. That roar that you talk about, um, I've heard that one time. Actually, two times I've heard it. Um, and it's a, it's hard to describe to people. I mean... <laughs> and I'm, I'm not going to try to make it because you sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not asking you to do that. I, you know, what I thought it sounded like, and, and maybe you have a different opinion. Um, I thought it sounded like, like a lion. I mean. It, it, it was guttural. It was. Very guttural. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, vibrating. Um, just thinking about it, it gets me a little. Um, it, it's definitely weird. Um, deep. Does that make sense? Yeah, very deep. Yeah, I had it recorded one time, and I ended up breaking that iPhone by mistake. But I know exactly what you mean, and it it does go through you. I I don't care what anyone says. Your dog is smart. (laughs) Your dog's like, I'm out of here. She's one of the best dog ever. She was great. She really was. Um, And I'm glad we got her back. But she, I I mean, to this day, I can can picture her. And she literally, she's running forward, but her head is looking right at me. Like, are you coming? Are you, we, I'm, I'm out of here. And um, it, so that that was that instance. And, no, um, and nothing was touched? None of your equipment was touched or anything? When no, you... none of it. None of it. It just, at the, you know, looking back at it, I think it was a, um, you know, get away from here yeah. type of thing. Um, just leave me alone. I wanted to ask you, before we get into the chase um, encounter, how far away from you was this thing when it roared? Well, I, the, the the tree was about 100 yards away because we could see I could see the top of it, but only the very tip moving. And then, you know what I'm saying? I didn't – the forest was pretty thick there. Um, I don't know what it is in the northwest, but we don't have a lot of open – I'm not saying we don't have a lot of open. But this particular area was had a lot of lot of 
uh, brush, you know, bushes and stuff like that. It wasn't. I got you. You know, it wasn't like miles away though. I mean, this thing no, was God, no, right there. No. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you know, when I heard it, it was probably, I'm gonna say, a quarter of a mile away. Wow. Maybe half a mile. And we uh, could hear it, and it scared the crap out of me when I heard it. I can't even imagine being 100 feet from one of these things and having it roar right at you, you know what I mean? It, it was, um, so So me and my buddy knew something was there, you know, um, obviously. So this was probably near the end of summer. We decided to go out and, and, and try to, you know, we're, we're, we're kids, we're teenagers, we're full of, piss and vinegar <laughs> so we made a plan we were going to skip school and he was going to grab his father's weapon i was going to grab mine my dad's um and we were going to go look for it and uh in hindsight that was pretty stupid but um we we spent the day we were, we, we we hiked uh all over the place we went to the spot where we had attempted to camp and we're like, we're not seeing anything. It was it was getting late. Our parents are going to get home. We wanted to get home before, you know, to put the, the shotgun and the rifle bag before, you know, they got home. And we, we started coming down the hill, and there was there were patches of snow. It was so it was late enough in spring, where, you know, there wasn't there wasn't snow other than you know small patches here and there. We had literally started turning around. And started, we were just giving up. And there was a there was a footprint in the snow, and it was huge. And we just looked at each other like, "Man, there there there's something here. There is." So we we did go home because again our parents were going to be home pretty soon, and we said we're going to skip school tomorrow. And so we met right. You know, our parents went to work. We grabbed the weapons. We started hiking again, and we saw. You know, we made a mental note where the where the footprint was headed, and we we started we started hiking that way. Um, we probably went a mile, and I, I know this is gonna sound crazy, um, but but we were in a, a whole area of pines, and it, and there were hardwood branches in the um, in the pine boughs. They were pointing a certain direction and we're like, wow, that's weird. So we started going that direction and we were following that direction and we came to a hardwood area and there were, you know, it was, it was just the opposite. There was all hardwood and there were, there were pine browse in the, in the branches. They were pointing the same direction. So we, we kept hiking that and it was, it was just really weird because it wasn't a pine tree when we were in the hardwood section and there wasn't any pine or uh, hardwood when we were in the pine section. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So there obviously for you're in the hardwood section and there's like a pine branch that was placed yeah, the, in the, there were pine you're... branches and they were, you know, I want to say 12 to you know 10 to 16 feet up in the air. I mean, they were taller than a man could get, you know, I, you could throw them up there, I guess, but they were all specifically, pointing in one direction it wasn't it, it look, really looked like they were placed there now mother nature's weird maybe you know <laughs> yeah still but, strange but, you know it's i it, mean it was weird to us yeah because you'd look around and there was no pine trees but there's 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 a you know a, a limb from a pine tree up in the tree that high um, I'm getting nervous even talking about this now and I sound stupid. No, you don't sound stupid at all, man. It's, um, I know this was kind of a, well, it was a traumatic event and I think anyone in your position would be terrified. I mean, I would, I'm a big, strong guy. You know, I, I don't like to admit that I'm, you, you know, that I'm scared or anything, but you know, you, you come across these things and you do get scared. I, I mean, if you don't, there's well, something wrong with you, but I, I'm going to tell you something. I was, I was in the Marine Corps for four years. Um, as a military policeman, and during that four years, I was never, I never felt this way, and I was in some pretty hairy situations, you know. I can imagine. Um, I can imagine. So you're seeing these things, and there it appears to you that it's being pointed in a certain direction, and and yeah. what happens next? Um, we're following it, 
we're going in that direction. We we come to a, it, it, I don't I'm trying to describe this so you understand it. It was a little ravine, and it and it like you know a wash, but it's it wasn't that deep. It was you know probably only one to two feet, you know, and, and a little banking on each side, but it wasn't deep. I don't want you to think it was deep. We, we start climbing. Up because we were still going up, uh, you know. I say mountain here, but I again, like I told you earlier, you guys have mountains, we have hills, but we're, we're, you know, so we're still headed up the, the, the mountain, and um, we hear talking. It was, it was, it was like a chattering. We, we had both stopped, um, and the only, and years later. Because we didn't have the internet back then, you know, I couldn't sit there and pull something up and kind of compare it to what it sounded like. But it was almost like samurai chattering. It was um, really quick. It was, uh, it, it, you know, yeah. I, I thought we had, you know, come across, you know, maybe some lumberjacks or something, you know, clearing something. And we just stopped and listened, but it didn't sound like that. It wasn't, it, I couldn't understand what they were saying. It was gibberish, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, just then, a tree to the, the right side of us, a tree to the left side of us, and a tree in front of us. And let me backtrack, because it went silent. It, it went completely silent. We heard it, we stopped, and then it was just silence. And it was like, me and my buddy were just looking at each other. And then right after that, these three trees came down and it, it was, it was almost simultaneously. It was almost, it's just all, um, and as soon as, you know, cause you're looking around and you see the, the tips of these trees coming, you know, I'm, I didn't see, I could hear, you know, he's looking one direction, I'm looking in another and we're both, and then we both turn and look forward and you can, you can see these trees and you can hear them. And then there was, there was, um, screams from three directions um intense um like kind of like we heard that summer but in 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 three different spots I, i've never i mean it was <laughs> got real real quick at that moment i would imagine yeah trees are being knocked um, down you're being screamed up we, you know, we had weapons on us, and there was no thought or cognizant thought of, of actually doing anything with any any weapon whatsoever. I mean, it was just complete terror. Um, you know, we went from, you know, we're going to go hunt something or, you know, with that false bravado <laughs> to scared out of our minds. I, I looked at my buddy. And I said, we got to get out of here. And he, he said, yeah, I know. I, I took a step backwards. He took a step. He dropped to the ground. Meanwhile, the ground is literally shaking because whatever pushed those trees down was running towards us. And I say towards us because that's my perception. They could have been, they wanted us out of there. I mean, that that's what I gathered. <laughs> um. He fell to the ground. I picked him up. I carried him probably three or four steps. I mean, I just swooped him up. He goes, I can do this. I, I got it. I got it. And we proceeded to run with all our might <laughs> down this hill and feeling whatever's around us, the the ground. And, and I can't emphasize this enough. The, the ground felt like it was vibrating, shaking. There There was hollering the whole time that never ceased. That never stopped. We we finally made it out of the. It was all woods, but we finally made it to a, a logging trail. And a, again, like I said earlier, you know, the old logging trails haven't been used for a while. They kind of bend and walk, water, you know, shapes them a little bit. Corrode, yeah. And um, we're we're coming down the logging trail, and there's a, there's a berm where there's there's a corner. Um. Yeah, sorry. No, you're right. As, as I'm going around the corner, I look to the right side of me, 
and a head pops up. And, and I'm, I don't know how to emphasize this. We didn't have the internet, so I could go and look at 4,000 pictures or, of what people think of Bigfoot or, you know, um, this, this was nothing. It wasn't what I expected. It wasn't what I had in my mind's eye of what Bigfoot would look like. All I saw was, was from the chest up. Um, it was huge. It was, uh, it had a, had a, had a conical head and it, you know, when I say conical, it wasn't, you know, big conical, it wasn't a huge conical, but it was pointed a little bit. Um, and it was red. It was, it was a, a cinnamon red, I would say. Um, and it screamed, it screamed at me. It looked at me. I made eye contact and just let out, um, I remember its teeth, its teeth were, were, were square and we just ran. We, um, there's an old, uh, where it used to be a train, they used to have a train track and they took the train track out. So it's an old dirt road. We got to that point, probably a quarter mile from my house and it, it stopped. They stopped, they stopped chasing us. Do you think that all of them were chasing you? I mean, I realize it's this is kind of a blur type moment, um, but do you think they were chasing you guys as before you ran into that one? Do you think that they were actually running you guys down? Yeah, I do. Absolutely, I think there was at least three that were because as we were running down the hill, we could hear them. On uh, let me say this: I know that there was one on each side of us because they they were not making any bones about you know, being quiet or trying to be quiet. They were letting us know that they were right there. Um, the brush was, I remember running and just hearing both sides, uh, just something, you know, tromping through the woods, fought matching us. I mean, I can't tell you if they, the one that was in front of us when this all started was chasing us at that point. I, I know that there was one on each side of us. I gotcha. And when the one popped up, how far away from you was this creature? Ten feet. Oh, wow. Really quick. Really close. Yeah. Can you describe what you saw for the audience as far as its face? I realize you're seeing it from um, about the chest up. It, I, I remember the black eyes. I remember the teeth. Um, the, the teeth were square. Uh, the nose was was kind of flared out. The nostrils were open. The thing that, that surprised me was the color because I had always imagined or thought, you know, other than reading books and stuff, it was, it was, it was, you know, black or brown. The shoulders were huge. Um, I, I honestly can't remember the ears. I don't remember the ears at all. I remember that there, there wasn't a lot of hair on the face. It, it was almost like a gorilla to me, but not, if that makes sense. <laughs> You know, I, I know this sounds crazy. So no, I mean it. So it kind it, of had. Was, did it have? It kind was of, kind of leathery. Um, it was definitely very leathery. I, it was just uh, intense, intimidating. Would you say? I realize you say like a gorilla, but not. Um, when you say but not, did it have any human features when when you looked at this thing? Well, the the face looked human, but it looked. <sighs> I, I, it, it didn't look exactly like a gorilla, and I'm not trying to say that it did. It, it was definitely, if I guess if you took, um, <clears throat> somebody did a drawing on your your um, your website, and you had it up probably a month ago, and it was just a drawing, but that was the closest thing I've ever seen to what I saw. I can't remember who did the drawing for you, but it, it was on the website for a while, or maybe it was on one of the episodes they had posted up. Um, I mean, looking at this thing, all I saw was anger. It, it, it really wasn't. It did. It wasn't exactly like. A, I mean, it was definitely a cross between a gorilla and and a man. I got gotcha. you. Okay. And I don't. I don't. And I know I'm not giving you much here. It's hard to explain these things to to someone who hasn't seen them. I get what you mean. Um, cause they do, if you're going to compare it to something, you, you might say gorilla, but if you, a lot of people have seen the face and everything, they'll say, but it wasn't a gorilla. It was very different. Right. Uh, yeah. 
But um, I think their stature and their size makes us think gorilla. You know, I mean, it's, it's just this big bulk. This thing was huge. It, it was huge. The the shoulders on it. I remember just, I, I just, he, it popped up and instantly started screaming. And all I thought was, I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> because it didn't matter. You know, not that I was thinking of the weapon I had on me, because I, I honestly wasn't. It, it, it's a, and I, I've tried to explain this to my wife that, you know, when you have a weapon on you in the woods, you think you're invincible. But, you but you do until, so, you, until you run into these things. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it wasn't, there wasn't even a thought. And I, I, I okay, I, I, since then I joined the Marine Corps. And again, I, you know, I know I'm a lot better at weapons than I was, but I don't think I would even think of it. I mean, it, it was just, it, yeah, it was too scary. I couldn't, I wouldn't have been able to make a conscious decision. I mean, it, other than flee. And and I don't know if that's something I should be saying to everybody, but um, the intensity of it was unlike anything I've ever known, felt, or experienced in my life, and hopefully never again. Yeah, I don't blame you. Um, and so what happens next? Do you guys, so this thing screams at you guys, do you immediately just take off running? We're, we're still running. This, this is all, all happening as oh, we're I got running. You. I got um, you. I'm going around the front. The, the, the you know the log, old log, logging road it pops up it screams it, 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 the sighting was only probably three, you know three seconds because I'm you know I, I see him pop up to my right side I look and I'm still running there's no stopping me unless he's he's physically putting me down I'm <laughs> my legs are moving I, I I look over and as I'm running by it I'm still hauling and and that's what I saw in that amount of time I and, you know probably. 400 yards after that we come to the old uh train road and then there's a little river with a bridge we cross that and we, and we start we're not far from a house at this point and they would it seemed like once we hit that road not that we stopped running because we did not it seemed like there was no more chase there was there was just it stopped right there did you did you tell anyone about this about your encounter um yeah um and this really, you know, as you go through life, you know, you think maybe I was crazy. Maybe, you know, you know, um, I was, I was sitting, this was just a couple of years ago. I was sitting at a campfire with some friends and one of my other buddies knew about it. And he goes, tell the story, tell the story. So I, I, I told the story again and, um, you know, I, I, I'm pretty selective of, of who I tell or try to be. <laughs> Because you sound nuts, especially being in Maine, you know. Yeah. Um, they look at you like you have four heads. Um, I told the story. Uh, there was a girl who was like two grades below me in in, in the school in Poland. She, she started crying, and I was like, "What? What? What's wrong?" You know, I didn't mean to scare you because oh, it's not that. She goes, "My my father just passed away," and I was like, "Oh, I'm I'm sorry that you know I." I hope I didn't do that. She, you know, say anything to trigger anything. She goes, well, kind of, because all as a kid, her father would tell her that him and his brother, so it would be her uncle, were, were hunting and would see this creature. And it was red, had reddish, you know, reddish hair. And they're from Poland. Her dad would tell her that she had to be home before dark. She could not walk to her cousin's house, which was a mile away in the dark at all. It had to be during the day. and just would give her all these rules and, and she was crying because she thought that he was just making this stuff up. Um, you know, just, just to keep them safe, you know, just come in when it gets dark and you know what parents do. So that made me feel really good about the validity, validity of, of, you know, the even yeah. cause it was a shame. It was the same color. Uh, her dad had said that it had a conical head, which, you know, so, I understand what you mean. I mean, you feel like there's moments after an encounter when you, and I think all of us go through this, where we think to ourselves, God, did I, am I losing it? You know, did I, it's kind of like Anthony was saying on last Sunday's show, he's like, did I have a breakdown? You know what I mean? And I think all yeah. of us kind of go through that of like, am I just having a meltdown and not, you know, you know losing losing my grip on reality? That, that being said, you know, I, I, I've talked to my buddy that was with me through this. He you know, I said, I, I want to talk about this. I want to tell this because this is, you know, this happened. And he goes, you know, you can, I just, I just, 
I don't want to be, you know, involved in it. And I'm like, why? And he, and he's a deacon in a, in a church and, you know, he has his own business. And so I get, I get that. But I looked at him, I said, well, am I crazy? Did this not happen? He goes, no, it happened. It happened. I, I think about it all the time, you know, so it makes you wonder if you should, you know, I should open my mouth, you know, and I, I think Maine is, is is a hotbed for this stuff. I think they're oh, I couldn't there. agree more. I couldn't agree um, more. And it's funny you mentioned that because you, you and I were joking about this earlier, and I was telling you, you said Poland. Um, yeah. And I knew yeah. exactly what you were talking about because <laughs> I don't think any of the audience has ever heard of Poland, Maine, I guess, unless you're from Maine. I don't think anyone – but I had a guy who contacted me, and he kept saying Poland. And I was like, you, you ran into the same Poland? And he goes, no, Poland, Maine. And so when you called me, I knew exactly where it was at. I mean, I even know a little I, I, bit about the town. I told my wife that, and she was like, wow. <laughs> that, I mean, that, and it floored me. Um, because, like I said, even the brother of my friend who was with me for this said that he saw one, you know, a mile and a half away from the house I grew up in, across the road. You know, I, I don't know. I, yeah. No, I, it, you know, it feels great to get it off my chest. Yeah, and I'm really you know. glad that you shared it. I mean, God, that's like Planet of the Apes right there, man. I mean, them knocking down trees and God, what a terror, terror moment of your life. I, I believe I believe wholeheartedly they use, you know, trees and stuff as signs or signals to other. It, it, it floored me because I, I'm thinking, you know, one Bigfoot. And I, I know I know that we we had three of them, at least three of them around us at the time. Um, do you think they? Do you think they were trying to harm you? No, um, I think if we would have stopped, if I would have pulled out a weapon, or you know, like I said, just stop and not not leave the area, I think we'd be dead. I, I believe that with all my heart. That being said, you know, they wanted us out, and and it was almost by by the by the chatter that we first heard, it sounded like a group. And then when we realized it wasn't because my, but the first thought is you don't want to go, you know, mythical wood creature. You want to go a group of loggers or, you know, that's what you want to think. Yeah. It's what your mind forces you to think because you want to rationalize things. Yeah. You don't know? go with what makes the most sense. I get it. Yeah. But, but it wasn't what we heard were multiple. So if they were talking, there's no way, there's no way that, and maybe there is a way, I don't know, but I don't believe there's a way that one could have got to the right and left of us within a matter of two seconds, three seconds. So I, I honestly believe there were more than three. Have you ever gone back to that area where you were this happened? Um, I, I've never went back to the actual, I've never made it that far. Uh, I went to where the, the, the a past where the berm is, where I saw it. I went, I went probably a quarter mile past that and I've looked, you know, weather's going to take its toll. We're talking, you know, 20 years ago, but where the berm was right now, this thing in, in my estimation, it had to be at least 10 feet because the, 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 the back of the berm, where the ground was, where the head came up, um, it, it had to be that big in, in my mind. Yeah, and it's interesting hear, hearing the talking. And you've heard, I think I have it here, uh, the Ron Moorhead, the um, the Sierra sounds. Did it sound like that? Uh, yeah, but it wasn't as loud. It was kind of, it was quieter. It, it was almost an attempt. It seemed like attempt because we had to, re we heard it and we stopped and we had to listen to it. And it wasn't whispering, but it wasn't, 
you know, if, if me and you were arguing right now, you know, in clear voices and talking you know, normally, it didn't seem like that. It seemed quieter. Kind of like they were trying to whisper, not really a whisper, but talk at <laughs> but yeah, low, yeah. low tones. Yeah. And again, I know this all sounds crazy. I do. It's, no, it doesn't really sound as crazy as you think, as you might think. Um, but it did have that ring of this kind of the same tone as the recording of the Ron Moorhead yeah, Sarah sounds. Yeah. When I, when I heard that for the first time, I, I the back of my, you know, my arm hairs were standing. Yeah, it makes you wonder what you walked into. You know, if you walked into if this is where they were set up and chilling for the the day, or if you walked that, into, you know, that is a million dollar question because I've racked my brain over that um, for years. For years, I've thought about you know what what did we walk into. You know, I thought about going back out there this summer, but I know that there's a, they, they put a couple of trailer parks in that area, not right there, but probably at about two miles away. So it's a little more developed. I don't know if they're still there. Oh, I would imagine they would be. You know, Poland isn't really, I mean, you know it more than I do. I'm talking like I'm from Poland or yeah. something. But Poland it isn't that, and I looked this up a long time ago, and I know it has under 10,000 people. I don't, I think the last census was back in uh, 2010 or something where they had 5,000 people. But yeah. <laughs> there's not a lot of people there, man. It's not. No, no um, that being said, and again, that's that's where I'm going to Maine. You know, about or talking about Maine, I, I just don't, people don't talk about it. Um, you're talking one million people in a state that could fit all of southern, you know, you know, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Rhode Island into the state. And people don't get that. Yeah. And you know. the other thing, too, about Maine, that's why I, I'm really glad that you came on, Jeremy, because I've, I've talked to a lot of people from Maine. And I will say Maine, Louisiana, and like Kentucky, those are the states to where you almost have to be good friends with someone or family in order for them to tell you what happened to them. They just will not. And I don't know why, it, why it's why it's that way, because I, I think there's way more that goes on in Maine than you'll find on the Internet with reports. I, I, I promise you. I mean, I, I've talked to and I'm going to tell you something. Um, you know, I'm, I'm 43 years old and the people I've talked to, I've known. I have to know you in some capacity. Um, I don't go around telling this to everybody because they do think you're you're crazy. They do think you're nuts. It, and I and I know people who've seen them in Rangeley, Rangeley, Maine. I, I my neighbor swore that she saw one just come out of a tree. You know, just behind from behind a tree, come out and just stare at them. And I've, they're there, they're and they're not as rare as people think they are. In my opinion. I tend to agree with you on that. I absolutely agree with you on that. I want to ask you what they are, you know, what you think they are. Um, but before I do that, one question I want to ask you, going back to your property when you were a kid, and you were looking at these tree structures, were they like teepees? I mean, what did they look like that you guys kept um, finding? Yeah, some of them were. Some of them were really crude, uh, where I just thought my friend had just started building something and just stopped. Some of them were teepees. Some of them uh we're pretty rocky up here or where my where my dad is um you know they'd be leaning against rocks but it it would be that somebody i know the difference between you know wind pushing something down and something being placed like when you have a row of 12 of them um i will tell you my my uncle my uncle's house fails me and i've been there and there have been trees with the root the roots, you know, they're, they're, they're leaning against another tree with the roots on top of the, you know, on top. And, uh, you know, wind can't do that. Yeah, it's like you and I were talking earlier. You know, some of the stuff that gets posted online um, absolutely is definitely wind and, and weather damage. And, you know, everyone snaps a picture and goes, oh, Bigfoot did that. But Yep, and, and I get that. I get that completely. But there um, is some odd ones. There's some very odd ones that are is not weather damage. And especially some of these tree snaps that you see, or even some of the branches you saw, uh, to where it's like, you know, unless some guy had a ladder and there was three guys that bent this over, I don't know how this thing got up there. 
And right. it's unless it was some weird weather, but then when you find one and then you find another one and then you find another one, you know, and that's why I think it's interesting with your, your encounter in particular, because you saw these markings in the tree and you guys were smart enough to follow them. And I've always wondered about that. If that is meant for them on where they're going, you know, more questions than answers, I guess. What, what I, what, in my opinion, and again, I apologize about sounding crazy. In my opinion, it, it, it was a gathering, and they they actually had signs out pointing to where they were. And I know it sounds nuts, but that's the only thing that logically I can take into my mind. And because this this was weird, I mean, I've never seen anything like it before or after. They they were purposely and precisely put up in these trees where that if I had tried. You know, some of the trees weren't that thick, but they were tall. You know, and if you tried climbing it up to put it up there, the tree would have broken. Some of the trees were huge, and they, I don't know. I don't know. That's the only thing I can, that there was a gathering, and they they were giving signs to where it was. Yeah, and I, and I tend to agree with you in this situation. I think that the, it was meant to scare you guys away. I don't think that they, I think if they wanted to run you guys down, I think they would have. Um, no, and I would have, you know, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. No, uh, I'm, I'd be a lost, you know, and, and the thing is people go missing in Maine all the time. Um, it, it, I, I guarantee if we hadn't run when we did, I wouldn't be here. My buddy wouldn't be here. And I often wonder yeah. too, in situations like this, uh, Jeremy, if, if, if you're there by yourself, a lot of times people get different reactions when they're by themselves. Uh, sometimes it's more aggressive than when there's two. I just wonder what would have happened if it would have just been you rolling up in there. Uh, I, I, I can't tell you. I've, I've, I've had nightmares about this since it happened. So I don't even, I, I don't even want to think about it. Uh, yeah, no, I understand. But, you know, yeah. looking back, even here in the encounter, they obviously weren't trying to kill you. Otherwise, they would have. It would have been nothing for them to kill you. And yeah. the, the pushing no, over the I, trees and, and then chasing you guys, I mean, if that's worse than a bluff charge, man. That That's about as high aggression as you get, you know what I mean, as far and, as and, making a display. And absolutely. And I think if we would have, if we would have took the time to take the weapons off our shoulders or just taking that extra couple of seconds to stop and think and talk or whatever, I think we'd be dead. I think we got the, 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 the epitome of, okay, here's the line. You cross it. There's problems. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There there was, there was, I, you got the, on the cusp. Yeah. Yeah. I think you were too. I think you were too. It's the equivalent of uh, a bouncer throwing you out of the bar without, breaking your nose absolutely absolutely and like i said it was it was an instant i mean just instant and this all happened with the trees and the yelling 30 seconds less i mean it it would time had no meaning no function it was instant panic the the only thing i took time for was telling him we got to get the bleep out of here he said, yes, we turned and we started running. And like I said, he fell to the ground, his knees, and I, he just, boom. And I picked him up. I picked him up and he, he's not, he wasn't a, you know, he's a skinny guy. <laughs> Thank God, you know, but I, I just <laughs> lifted him up and I, and I went like three or four or five steps and he's like, I got it. I got it. Put me down. I can run. And I put him down and we just, it was just. I guarantee that, you know, we could have broken some records. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. It, it was just. You guys ran the just, 40 faster than any NFL player I, alive today. I promise today. you. I promise <laughs> you. My legs, I don't think that. They didn't feel like they touched the ground. They literally did not feel like they touched the ground. I was just gone. Yeah, no, I, I'm so glad that. It, it went the way it went because it could have gone a different way pretty quick. And like I said, even with your guys' weapons, you the, you guys would have – they would have mowed no, you guys down. Did Did you want me to tell you what um, – when I was in at Kadena Air Station? Sure. Or, yeah, sure. 
Um, I, again, I was a Marine and I, um, I did customs immigrations, um, for the Marine Corps in Okinawa. We, um, I had to go over to Kadena air station and do some shifts with some of the air force guys. And we were talking and they were talking about the base being haunted and all this and that. I said, well, I got a, I got a story. I'll tell you guys. Um, I told them my Bigfoot story and, and two of the guys said, well, that's wild, but we have one too. And I said about Bigfoot. And I said, yeah. And apparently they, and I don't know where it was. I know it was the Southwest. I know it was an air, air base. Um, they told me that their posts were half, half underground. And then the top was open and they said that they were sitting there and watching Bigfoot walk by and it freaked them out. And they had, they had called their commander. They said, just ignore him, ignore it. You know, don't worry about it. You know, that that's all secondhand story. You don't have to, you know, but I just thought that was interesting because I, I, I believe there's something going on with the, the government as far as them not releasing information. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. There, there is a lot of reports. I've talked to a lot of guys because um, I was always, you know, I, 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 at the long time ago, I had a hard time with people who said they saw these things in Arizona or in New Mexico or in, you know, kind of the desert out in the United States, just the desert area. And same then I started, and then I started talking to guys on military bases, and uh-huh. the same thing. Uh-huh. Um, these things are running around in secured areas that are almost impossible to get into. And then a lot of times when, I don't know if it's MPs or people standing guard, they'll see them and they're told not to approach them. Don't, you know, don't report it. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Yeah, it's just weird, man. It's just weird. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely um, because I would never th- thought, you know, the first time I heard of a Bigfoot, you know, in the Southwest in the desert, I was like, nah, there's no way. But these guys... They had been stationed there together, and they swore, you know, they swore that's, that that happened. Did he give you any descriptions, I mean, as far as what he had actually seen? Um, just that it it was huge. I think he said nine nine foot brown, and I, I, th- I think he also said it looked like Patty. You know, like the, he didn't say Patty, but he said the, you know, the film. Yeah, it's fascinating. And and like I said, you know, I used to have a hard time with it. I think the person who changed my mind the most, um, I call her the godmother of Bigfoot, but it's Brenda Harris. And, you know, she's down there in the Southwest. Yep. Yeah, and, I've, I've heard you talk to her. Yeah, and Brenda is, you know, I give researchers a hard time. I like to break their balls every chance I get, you know. it's Which uh, I think is deservedly so most of the time. But. And most of the time <laughs> I'll, I'll laugh when they see research. You know, drinking beer and sitting out in a tent and in the middle of the forest with your little recorder. I don't know that I'd call that research, but Brenda's actually a real <laughs> researcher. Um, right. I, I would give her that title. She changed my opinion a lot on these things, you know, and a lot of what they are and what they uh, what they do. And, you know, I just love her to death. And I think that she actually is a real researcher, um, mm. as much as it kills me to say that. But I, I th- truly believe she's a real researcher, man. And there's a lot of times where I'll go to Brenda, if I don't know something, Uh, She's in my top five people I'll call and just get her opinion on it because, um, and generally she's right on with a lot of what she says. I mean, it's hard to, you know, I like to argue with people, but it's hard to argue with her on some of the things that she says. And she's down there in the desert, you know, and they definitely have them down there. Um, I wanted to ask you, what do you think Sasquatch is? What, oh, yeah. What's your uh, – <laughs> and there's no wrong answer, uh, of course. Yeah, no... I, I've heard you say that too. Um, <laughs> I I don't know. Um, I believe in God. I don't I don't know where it fits into what I think, and I don't know if they're demonic. I don't know um, they're a lost animal. I, I just – it doesn't feel right saying that, even though everything tells me it should be. You know, just t- some type of, of animal undiscovered. I, I don't know. I, I, I honest, I, I thought about that a lot. Um, there, there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about this. And, and I know I wasn't hurt. I know I wasn't necessarily, per se, attacked. I, I think I was driven out of somewhere. I, I don't know what it is. And I know I sound crazy saying demonic. No, you don't sound, as, you don't sound crazy at all. You know, it's, 
Um, and I don't blame you for this thing haunting you. You know, you were in the gray area. I think you guys were on the cusp of being killed. I think the original intent w- was to move you. And, and again, I'm, this is just Wes, Wes's opinion, which, you know, means nothing. But I think the original intent was probably to get you to leave. And if you didn't, then they were going to ramp it up. And yeah. you were in that gray I, area. I, I agree. I agree with all my heart. And um, I, I got to say something to you that listening to your shows and listening to, um, you know, what you have to say and even other people on your shows, you know, when you bring them on the guests and stuff, it, it really, I want to say brings, not, I don't want to say closure because it's still ongoing for me, but it, the validation of, of, because there, you know, there, there are times I wake up and I think I'm just nuts. You know, <laughs> I really yeah. do. I mean, I get it. But yeah. it, these things are real, and and I pray to God that more people come out, and especially up in here, I know there are sightings. I know there are, and and people won't talk about it. And when you told me you you know you would talk to somebody from Poland again, that was just validation. It, yeah. It's frustrating, isn't it? Isn't it, Jeremy? Yeah, that really, really, really is. And, and I get what you mean when, you know, and I ask people, and, I, and it wasn't meant to, I don't mean to put people on the spot, but I just love to hear people's opinions, you know, and and because nobody truly knows, despite some of the experts out there will tell you X, Y, and Z, and they're, they're full of it because no one truly knows what they are. Um, I love asking people about when they've had encounters, well, what do you think it is? What is it? And you know what's interesting is you never hear someone or very few times people will say oh it's just a monkey they just don't people say well it reminded me of a monkey but there's something different about it there was something uh in the eyes there was something on the face it just ape but not really an ape monkey but not really a monkey human but not really a human and there's no other animal on this planet that we struggle with more than than this thing it's not a normal animal. There's something very no. different about it. No. Um, I think it's the raw power, the, the capacity that is there to destroy, if that makes sense. You know, I, I told some, I, I t- told a couple of friends at work, and I get picked on every day. And, and, but I don't, I don't care about them picking on me because I know what I, I know what I saw. I know what I experienced and I know that they're out there. You know, I don't go out in the woods and I I do, I still love to go hiking. I still love to, you know, I don't go out there. I'm going to see one today. I'm going to see, you know, I'm not like that. I mean, if I, if I never see one again, I'm okay. (laughs) You know, I'm okay, but there's still a want and need, I guess, for one of these things to be found, (laughs) you know? Yeah, no, I get it. I get it completely, and I and I don't I don't think that's going to happen. I, I think until the powers of be decide that this thing can come out, I think that's when it'll come out. You but, know, but there there has to be a bigger plan. Absolutely, know? absolutely. And what I'd give to even understand that, I'm not saying I would agree with it, but I, I just like I I'd like to understand why. You know, why are they covering this up? Why is it? so important i mean and and i've heard all the arguments you know you don't want crazy people running around the woods with guns you know hunting for bigfoot and killing other and i've heard you know it'd be like the spotted owl i've heard to me there's something more yeah and i'm with you on that all those arguments are ridiculous in my mind you know if they came out and said bigfoot's uh alive and well and you're going to run into them well if you're going to go get your guns you're going to go chase them we're See you later. It was great night. It was nice knowing you. We'll probably never see you again uh, because yeah. people have no idea what they're getting involved with. You take Not a gun cool. out there. Good luck. Uh, if you might kill one, but you yeah. you you're going to get hit but, by the one that you don't see. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you something. I know. I know for a fact. It's it's not just one. You know, it's it's not just one creature running around North America. I mean, I know that with within 200 yards of me, there was at least three. It's one of those things to where you start looking at all the arguments. You know, I don't believe for one moment the lumber industry has that much pull in our government to cover uh-huh. this up. I just don't buy it. 
yeah. there's something very different going on here. There's something very, and it's almost it's almost the question of, do you really want to know the answer? Do you really want to know the answer? I do. And well, you say that, but when you get the answer, you may not be. You may be wish you never got the answer. Um, and I you think know, it's going to be one of those situations. I, I can tell you right now, I want to know the answer, with, without a doubt. But worse than, I, I do, I do. Um, you know, I, I don't. You asked me what I thought there were. You know, I've I've thought about Nephilim. I've thought about fallen angels. I've thought about them just being, you know, a different primate. I, I thought about it all, and that I, I know growing up as a kid that, like I said, there were times where I would feel something there, and it, it wasn't a warm and fuzzy something there. It was a, all right, I got to get the heck out of here. I, I, I you know, I, I don't think they're in, I know you've had people on the show that, you know, want to feed them and be friends with them, and uh, uh, may, may, maybe there are ones out there like that i don't know i you know i'm not i can't sit here and say that that that's not the case because i don't know all i can know is and say is what i know and what i've experienced and it wasn't warm and fuzzy it, it wasn't it it didn't kill me but it, it you know it didn't come over and sh- shake my hand and high five me either yeah you know you're not getting a christmas card from it this year or anything no. yeah <laughs> no christmas card no yeah <laughs> you know i mean i hear you and I get it, and I'm the same way, man. I mean, there's a lot of um, people accuse me of only putting a – they used to accuse me of it. I don't know if they still do. I don't really pay attention I, anymore, but they used to accuse me of – I haven't heard that in a while. Yeah, of only putting aggressive encounters on the show, and it's like, no, that's, I, I don't pick and choose. Um, people are welcome to come on and talk about their encounters. Just most of them are aggressive. That's just the I'm, way it is. It is. It is that way, and I'm going to tell you something that, that, that the non judge judgmental way you do your show is unbelievable and i appreciate it it's uh you more than you'll ever know and i mean that well thank you man i appreciate saying that like i said it's um uh, i know what it's like to be called a liar i know what it's like to have the public kick you in the teeth over what you've seen and you know i i try and avoid doing that to people at all costs because everyone has had different experiences with these things not everyone's experience is the same and so my encounter, much like yours, uh, was very aggressive. And so it's hard sometimes when you hear encounters of people who they're gifting with them and it's friendly. But, you know, in this genre, you got to hear from everyone. If you're truly mm-hmm. looking for answers, you got to hear from everyone. Absolutely. And even if it's crazy and it seems nutty, you got to hear from everyone. And because it paints a picture of what we're actually dealing with until the government comes out and says, okay, Sasquatch is real. It's X, Y, and Z. And here's what they are. Here's, you know, what, until they go down the list, um, I don't know any other way to get information as far as what these things are. I mean, I, witness encounters are golden to me. I, and, and it's nice for me too, because I'm like you, man, it's nice to hear someone else who's had an encounter. Um, I'm not the only you know, you feel crazy and you feel like you're the only person that dealt with this, you and your buddy, but a lot of people have dealt with this. Mm-hmm. And um, I really appreciate coming on. I, I really enjoyed talking you, with you, man. Do you have a quick second? Yeah, of course. Of course. What do you think they are? Um, at the moment, I'll say I don't know. I don't know. I have a theory. <laughs> I have a thing I'm working on um, oh. that I'm putting together for an upcoming show. And okay. so it sounds like a dick move for me to say, well, you know, that's okay. That's I don't, right. and I don't mean I, I, to, I don't mean no, to, I'll wait, I'll wait to hear it. But I do have a theory on what they are and I just don't know if people are ready to hear it. Um, but I, I guarantee I am, <laughs> I guarantee, can I, can I say something off the record? Yeah, of course. But this doesn't go on the show. Yeah, I'll just cut to elevator music. Okay. <laughs> I, I... Yeah, That's well, just, uh... and, and I tend to, the elevator music's off. I tend to agree with you.
I tend to agree with what okay. you just said. Uh, there All is right. something to that. The, absolutely, right. there's something to that. But everyone else, you know, they just heard elevator music. So excellent, thank you. Because <laughs> that is that is way crazy. But I, again, I believe in God. I, I pray every day, and that you know, maybe I am crazy on that theory, but not as crazy as you might think. Definitely not as crazy as you might think. But I appreciate it, Jeremy. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me, but appreciate it. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you get a chance, check out the website, sasquatchchronicles.com. Until next time, everyone.